This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB. Today in the arena, we're going to get back to one of my favorite strategies in the world. But before we dive in, thank you very much uh, for what you've raised for Extra Life, the response continues to be amazing and if you wanted to see the ice dragon i don't know what to call it skit event stream anyway uh there are links to it in my discord which there's a link in the description and there's a clip of it on my twitter that is getting circulated and that link is in the description as well so i encourage you to check out the ice dragon also for those of you who don't believe my wife is real you can continue believing that, but if you check out the Ice Dragon clip, it's probably going to shatter your um, your worldview. Not sorry. <laughs> she She's pretty great in the clip. It's, it's fun. Uh, so uh, make sure you check that out if you're interested. I have added one more tier because, God, you guys don't stop. Thank you so much. Um, so at... 12,500, I will buy the Fire Dragon and do a skit. Also, I am confirmed to, if I do end up going to the Children's Hospital to meet the kids after this fundraising is over, I have promised Twitch chat that I will bring the Ice Dragon as part of the show. So, uh, on that note, that's my plug for Extra Life. By the time you watch this, it's going to be the last day of the campaign, Saturday. Saturday, November 7th is the last day of the campaign. So it's your last chance to contribute if you can afford it. If you can't, I understand. It's okay. You don't have to feel bad. And any amount helps. Even a dollar. Uh, I think the lowest donation is 69 cents. Nice. Uh, yeah, anything helps. So um, if, you'd if you've ever considered supporting the channel, I ask that you donate to the Extra Life campaign, where my team, Witches of the Coast, is by far the most successful six-person team. So that is freaking awesome, and uh, thank you so much for all of your help. All right, the deck. Today's pile of cards. Yorian! It's, it's been a minute. The Dream Trawler thing, the Dream Trawler Magic Mirror deck, that doesn't count. Didn't, didn't use Yorian properly. Does not count. Excited to get back to abusing one of my favorite cards in Standard and its blink action. And this particular build, we got rid of some of the not, some of the things you're used to seeing, like Maze Mind Tome, to involve Trail of Crumbs, Gilded Goose, Wicked Wolf, the food package that's left over and still really good. Green gives us Lanoir Visionary, which is really nice. We can be a Doom Foretold deck because we also have a way to pull it all out of the graveyard with Eerie Ultimatum. And we have a few enchantment loving cards sprinkled in with Satessin Champion, Archon of Sun's Grace. Whenever a, an enchantment enters the battlefield, get a Pegasus. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield, draw a card. If you bring those into the battlefield at the same time with Eerie Ultimatum, along with some enchantments, they all trigger. It's nice. Same thing with Yorian. Blink them, bring them back, they all trigger. For Elspeth's Nightmare, I found this card very good against rogues specifically, and okay against other things, so... For the first time, I'm really throwing my faith behind this card, and hopefully it will help. Lanoir Visionary is a freaking sweet one. Wicked Wolf, Legion Angel, because we're best of one and we want to use that sideboard. And for Doom Foretold, three Yorians in the main, one in the Wishy Board. For Elspeth Conquers Death, because it's still one of my favorite things to do. And then we have the Eeries. None of the DFCs were not playing any of those cards, actually. Uh, the lands that can also be spells. I was having too much problem, paying too much life, tapped lands, awkward mana. And this mana base actually started working out fine. Another reason that it had a ton of basics, quite honestly, was I ran Omen of the Hunt. I no longer run Omen of the Hunt. So it's possible that we could find a way to turn some forests into turn timber symbiosis, turn some swamps into Agadim's Awakening. I just don't think... I don't think it will gain much. So I'm not convinced it's worth it. So since it's been working the way it is, I'm going to leave it as it is for now. And then you look at it, 
it's mostly an Eldraine and Theros deck. Not many new cards, but it feels like a deck that's become a lot stronger with all the cards under it being banned. So I'm excited to see how it does on current ladder. And the cards that we're not including, there are many, go ahead and sprinkle them in. If, if it popped into your head, looking at this deck list, why not this? Why not that? Go ahead, add it. Do it. I, I will not stop you. But it's probably because it sucks. Okay, let's dive in. <laughs> Let the less trolly nonsense begin. I will not make misplay today. I will not make misplay today. I will not make misplay today. This is our prayer. All right. The Archon is awkward because we have kind of a green-black hand going, but we can goose into Vigi. It's not very powerful, though. And if the red the red deck is nothing if not powerful. If I make a green here, am I going to lose the game for it? I have to. All right. Careless Celebrant, and people make fun of me for having Careless Celebrant in the Mono Red song. Behold! The Careless Celebrant is real. Should we Glass Casket the Sucker and slow them down? Should we save it for Annex Hardened in the Forge? I definitely want to play you. Very much. We could also play a Visionary. And then what? We have... The mana could be really bad next turn. We might not even have a play. Or no, I guess we have another visionary no matter what. All right, we're going for it. Besides, we might draw the right cards. Skyclave app, I wouldn't say is it. Double white here is not good. No blocks. I don't want to lose any things. Straight up Rimrock Knight. Opponent misses land drop. I like it. I'm into that. Okay. Play this tapped, play other visionary? Probably. They're getting close to Embercleave, so I might take some trades now. Especially with the wolf in hand. We do need another white, though. Okay, opponent found a shock. Opponent found another arsonist. Alright, they have Embercleave mana now. Y mana, you know what I mean. Dorian! Uncastable. Hype. Let's get wicked. Let's see. Actually, we can wicked a one of these. We have no food. <laughs> Alright, maybe I'm supposed to make food here. And have double white for the future. Or just have a food for the wolf. Yeah. All right, let's take out the biggest critter. Not a great turn. Uh-oh. They found the land. Mm. That's not good. I'll block here with a goose and try to get them to embercleave that. Yep. They did. I'm happy about that because it absorbs more damage, whereas going face would be harder to recover from. And now we draw the other white. <sighs> what a bizarre game this has been. So let's go, if we Wicked Wolf the Arsonist, it can't target anything else. If we Wicked Wolf this, then they have to re-equip somewhere else. If they target the wolf, we can sack the food to save it. But then they just re-equip. What if I exile this with a Skyclave and then sacrifice this for life? All right, what if I Yorian, blink the casket, take this, then they have to re-equip. I draw an extra card. All of these are... Mm. All of these are tough. All right, I think we use the food for life. No... Let's do the wolf on the arsonist, planning to block the creature with the ember cleave. 
And we can also sacrifice the food for life if we need to. A lot of possibilities there. I think I found the one that gives me the best chance. Okay, there we go. Are you attacking? You soldier. All right. Block. Nom. They get a token. They get to deal one damage. I need more life. I need, I need more food. Interesting. That's only one damage. They thought they had a fire blade charger. They didn't. They definitely need more white mana with all these double white cards in hand. So Yorian can blink, casket, take annex. Ugh. This gets equipped. This doesn't deal damage to a player, so I can block that with the wolf. All right. We definitely have to undo the annex. And I suppose we have this mana. We'll buy a Yorian and say go. Still holding on. Okay, they're not equipping Embercleave this turn. They make a 3-3. Three, three. Gonna want to flicker this casket. All right, we can double white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we can do Skyclave Apparition. Get rid of you. Can do the Life Linker, or we can Yorian now. I guess Yorian now is just fine. Uh, let's attack with the 4 4 first. <laughs> so we bring it all back. Wicked Wolf fights the 2 2. Glass Casket picks off the 3-3. Skyclave Apparition picks off the Rimrock Knight. That's why we let it out. Let it out of its cage. And the opponent's on a 1-1 with a cleave. All right. Did we do it? Annex returns. God. Okay. Um... This looks fun, but there's also double Yorian. I just wish I could somehow sneak out the Archon in the meantime. I mean, how do we not double Yorian? You have to auto order. Tr We're going to need to set our triggers up to be auto-ordered here, or not auto-ordered, the opposite of that, you know what I mean. All right, if I play that, it's only four. I can't play that. So I play this, no, I play this, and tap this. All right, keep the one that was already there for the double triggers. Exile the Yorian that's there, the Wicked Wolf, the Skyclave, the Goose, more food, the Casket, End the turn. Put the Skyclave Apparition trigger last. Target the Annex. Eat the 2 2. Casket the 1 1. Make the food. Oh, it's it's the it's the mono red apocalypse. Alright, exile any number of permanents, do it again. So exile the goose, exile the casket. <laughs> exile the visionary. Consider exile. Definitely exile the apparition because we don't want them to get the token. Consider exiling the wolf. <laughs> oh yeah. 
Okay, we'll try it. I do want something to pay off the food. And we don't have an easy green source, which is frustrating. So we can't turn one goose. So it's not perfect. It also doesn't interact. We need to draw enchantments for the Satessan champion to be good. So the Satessan champion, I saw versions of the deck that run the Great Henge. I thought Satessan champion had a similar effect if you run a ton of enchantments, more enchantments than creatures. So that's how we ended up with Satessan champion as a Great Henge type effect for a creature based or an enchantment based deck rather. That's obnoxious. <clears throat> I guess we don't have much in the graveyard yet, but that does have to go. But I don't want to spend the turn with on a casket. I want to develop my mana more. Gruel Adventures. A deck that gets played so much nowadays. Kind of disgusts me. All right. What do we do? I think we do the most mana efficient things, which involves other goose. Skyclave app for the ooze. And then we have glass casket or potential draw Yorian flicker. Take that. That's what I think of your deck. All right, I would take a Wicked Wolf too. That would be nice. Any enchantments great with the champion. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we can do most of the things we want to do if we are willing to eat the food, which I think I am. Although we're really close to getting the Yorian. Okay, we don't have to play Birth this turn. That's what we don't have to do. It's a loose goose attack, let's do it. Just to tilt him. Just for the effect. Rawr. The beast is loose. All right, untapped land is Yori, and we don't get it though. So let's play the birth. Trigger the Satessin, go get the planes. Ooh, yes. Now we're talking. Oh, things are heating up now. Oh God, no loose goose attack. We can block a one one with it. <laughs> so we're down a food. So next turn's not Yorian. Or oh, it is one, two, three, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, next turn can be Yorian. That's that's hot. That's fire. The opponent, they're gonna ooze away our graveyard. We are going to punish them for that play, man. They must be punished. I'm not going to blink the champion. So I can attack before or after. Where are you going? You, you leaving? Oh, oh, oh. okay, bye. <laughs> they don't wanna see this Yorian turn. Oh my goodness. This deck is out to ruin me. Really? 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 Okay, at this point, it's an experiment. Okay, we found a hand without... We, we, we did it, guys. We found a hand without Eerie Ultimatum in it, in the 80-card frickin' deck. I couldn't... Like, rage doesn't begin, guys, to describe it.
And the part that you don't know, if I go back to the games I've cut that I know I'm going to cut, I've been mana screwed for three games in a row. Each one of them has had Eerie Ultimatum in the opening hand. But the shuffler is fine, right? It's totally fine. Green food plus adventure. This should be interesting. Our four card hand is working out, I've gotta say. I've I've I'm not upset. The four carder is giving us a chance. But we do need to draw some card advantage, which we don't have yet. That's brutal. We needed that, but I guess it's in the graveyard now. ECD can get it back someday. Really, dude? Come on now. Come on now. Goodbye, wolf. And now if they play the Lovestruck Beast, we Yorian it. They know about the Yorian. Actually, if they play anything big, we blink the ECD and Yorian it. But they're doing it anyway. Might mean they have a Troll King. Wow. I'm just going to do this. Because I actually want the Skyclave back to take out these Trail of Crumbs. This draw is going perfectly, and I'm almost ready to draw an Eerie Ultimatum. Like, we're, we're close. <laughs> we are close to top decking an Eerie Ultimatum and being happy about it. But not that happy, I guess. Could use some more stuff in the graveyard. Oh, Floyd, you may want to eat that food before your trails are gone. But we'll see. We'll see what the Elf Lord decides. My turn would be eat food, draw a card. Possibly eat food again, draw a card. Or eat food, draw two cards. It's a four card hand, like burying me in card advantage is a smart move. So, like every card they get up on me is harder for me to come back from. Who knows, they might find a scavenging ooze for the apparition. Which would be really good. Alright, you don't have any timeouts, Elf Lord. You're gonna have to do something. Wow. That's. I would not call that something. But we'll see. Maybe they have a plan. Maybe they have a ram through. That won't matter, though, because of this. Because of ECD. Take out the trail. Orion! I'm just going to mulligan all the time now. This is going great, aside from an army of tokens. I don't think it actually matters here. <clears throat> I'm just giving the opponent a chance to do something silly, but I don't think they even can because of this. Mm. Not a lot of downside, though, to reordering. Ponder's Enclave, no fatties. But let's see. Do you have fatty up your sleeve? Would you like to attack again? No. Opponent with no moves. All right. So now we want to be aggressive because if something dies, we can get it back. They snap that block off. The champ is here. 
future enchantment draws will get us card advantage and try to get us back into this game. That's an enchantment! Alright, this is a plus one, plus one, but no target. Let's go! Card and food. Bon Appetit. Nightmare? Absolutely. It's so brutal. It's like... Man, it's been a long time since I won on a mold of four. Be aggressive now. Try to close this sucker. They must have all land. I, I can't think of what they might still be holding. But I guess we might get we get a look next turn. Thanks to the nightmare. Opponent does have food to eat. They can hang on. Do they even have the heart to do it? Uh-oh. They has devoured my Yorian with Wicked Wolf. But that's your food. What are you gonna do without your food? Okay. They were holding one of these two. I can't imagine. I guess because of the Skyclave coming back, they held this. That makes sense. Whoa! Oh man, <laughs> nabbed it. Another nightmare. Trying to draw a way to close the game right here. Did we do it? Almost. Nightmare City. Oh man, two more mana and we would have had it. All right, they now have Bonder's Enclave with the Wolf. They have Lovestruck Beast. They have some blockers. Whoa, bro. You crazy? You crazy, dude? You're on four. You are on four. What do you think is going to happen here? Mm-hmm. That's a game. Ugh, another ugly mana hand. We're up against Gyruda. <laughs> it's been a while. Been a while. What is going on? <laughs> okay, I'll keep Mono White Abzan. This this was amazing for content last time. <laughs> Mono White Abzan unleashed. We got him right where we want him, everybody. Really, I drew two straight Elspeth Conquers Deaths off the top of the deck instead of lands. It's one of those days. <laughs> it is one of those days. I don't even know anymore what to what to say. Cool. Good game. Good game. I, all right, I've been on two lands and scooped more times than I can remember today. This is, just gotta push through, man. I have three lands in my hand and I might not have a total disaster with my colors. So we're keeping it. Just keeping it. There's no way we're not. But my 
God has this, this day has been just brutal, brutal. You won't even see. Like, there's no way I'm putting half the half the games where I just scoop on turn two. Or turn, turn two isn't right, but like it's turn five with two lands. That's what I mean. I think we do this. Just load up. That's pretty fun. Lotus Cobra. Fortunately, I brought the answer. The nightmare. Proving itself to be a nightmare. This is a really good draw now. <laughs> this is a really good draw. I'm getting excited. We might even eerie ultimatum if things go well. Our opponent gets the cultivate off, but let's see if we can nab a Genesis ultimatum. Looks like they're on team or ramp. Another cultivate, a beanstalk giant, and a cobra. So this is going to be an ultimatum battle. It's going to be all about who gets to play their ultimatum. So how do we keep ramping? We also have a lot. We have to fix our colors a lot, but the goose can do that. So let's do this. Go get white. We might not be able to ultimate him next turn, nor would we necessarily want to. We still need to fill the graveyard. But we're getting set up for some absolute destruction. Why not? Gotta send a message. It's not like it takes more time. If we get to 8 mana, we can bring Yuri in and play it on the same turn. When the opponent plays their Cobra here, we're going to Wicked Wolf it, I think. Oh, okay. No Cobra, double Beanstalk. So their plan is to go big with the Beanstalks. How are we going to deal? Well, an opportunity to get some stuff in the graveyard, that's for sure. Let's do this. This. This, that, honk. Nice top deck. Good draw, I hear. I hear it works out most of the time. Okay, they must have another one in hand. What else would you put into your hand there? Other than two more, two or three more Genesis Ultimatum. Which means we get wrecked next turn instead of this turn. Which means we do have to deal with the Cobra. ECD. Too slow. <laughs> Getting back the Elspeth's Nightmare to try to take a Genesis Ultimatum is an option. It's... I don't know, man. That's not much of an ultimatum. You know what I mean? But it might be the right option, because if their top five isn't great, the next ultimatum is probably going to kill us even more so. So what is this? Triple black? God, I can't believe this, but I think it's right. Their ultimatum, though, is probably better than mine. We'll admit. I don't even have a use for three mana here. I can make another food with Goose, though. Could hold that for instant speed, of course, but I'm kind of just like, do it, do whatever it is. That's not an ultimatum. The ultimatum found cultivates. There's one more non. There's one more spell in hand that I think we get here. Oh my gosh, we're still in this. We're still in this. Oh, it's a mimic, is what they put in their hand, and two triumphs. Oh, so they can cycle them. Sure. Sure.
think we start playing these and start floating the ECDs and the nightmares. We don't have to exile that ECD there, but I don't think it makes a difference necessarily. Triggers! Yorian! Top deck? Every time, baby. Every time. Whiffed again? What the heck? What is happening? You know Ugin is coming. We have to do some double Yorian stuff to make sure our board is exiled during our opponent's turn. Alright, they can cast another giant, but it just gets ECD'd. Cultivate Fire Prophecy. I choose Fire Prophecy. Let's go, buddy. All right. Five mana for other Yorian. One, two, three, four for other things. Possibly five, six. One, two, three, four. All right. So we'll do this. We'll do this. We'll do this. Um, let's go like this. Terror of the Peaks might be a thing. <laughs> Keep this one, trigger, all of you. Now it all comes back and then we re-blink it all. So that if there's an Ugin, all this stuff comes back later. Plenty of cards to go for those of you thinking I could possibly deck myself. I don't think Casket's very good against them, but we may as well keep it for a minute. The Legion Angel is good pressure, I suppose. The Goose might be extra, but it's not it's cheap extra. I think we'll drop off one of the wolves. It's just very expensive. Pass turn. <laughs> Good choice, because all this is coming back. Although they could have played the Cultivate. Maybe they don't have any basics left. Draw. They're checking my library size. Ha. Ah. Let's get in that hand, shall we? Scorching dragon fire. So they've got the bone crusher giant. I don't have a way to interact with that, it, but what are they? Hmm. I guess I could play this and in response they could kill that. Why would they take the damage from it though? They wouldn't. So I could cast this and just see if they respond. All right, I had a feeling they'd do that. I just wanted to make sure. Let's go ahead and get some food ready. Let's 
because we're gonna blink all that. Those geese. Alright, we want to put the pressure on the opponent because they're at 16 life. We need to close before they find what they need to find. So, I think we play out some cards like the Angel and the Wolf. Although leaving mana up to gain life might be critical if they hit, you know, the um, Terror of the Peak stuff. So this is 8. The Wolf, there will be 6 from the two geese, and then it can generate more. So I guess it's the wolf. So much for gaining the life. We're just gonna have to fade like some Terror of the Peaks Genesis Ultimatum top deck. Rip them. All right, we found another ultimatum. Hallelujah. All I wanted from this game was an a big ultimatum. We had a very, very puny one earlier, I must say. Like the smallest possible ultimatum. Trying to discard things that aren't in the graveyard right now that I could get back. The more mana they are, the better usually, but what can you do? Oh, it's discard six cards. I'm discarding too many. I'm still not used to that new submit this. Oh man, come on guys. Come on bros. What a champion. All right. There is no ECD down there. But, there's a lot of creatures. Ugin will have to fi- <laughs> Okay. Get him. Maybe the- maybe next turn? Chomp chomp. We all knew Ugin would come for us eventually. I was just trying to set it up so that it wouldn't happen when I had all those things on the board, but here we are. All right, the opponent, what is that, another giant? It must be, there's not much else to think about here. So their last card must be another Bone Crusher giant and whatever they drew off the top. Although I guess they run Prophecy and Dragonfire, it could be those. Face. Okay then. Terror of the Peaks there would have been devastating. Mimic, fun. Whee! Shall we? Shall we everybody? Boom! <laughs> Oh, baby. Um, why not? Uh, <laughs> I definitely could have stacked these better. What I'm sure of is that these, these bone crushers are going to die. All right, what do we want to blink? Choose you and you and you. There's still another planes in the deck after all. And you. I don't think we need to blink anything else. And they don't get a token. Because why would I let them have such a thing? Alright, let's crack this. The fun thing about playing against the teamer ramp deck, they have to stay. Because they could always top deck ultimatum and win. It could happen. So they're at 16. This is 4. We're at 10. I can't get to enough food to kill them. 
The question is, should I deal extra damage here or should I gain the life? I think the life is better because of the Terror Peaks to the Dome strategy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll play a goose, put them on 12, gain a bunch of life potentially. <laughs> Ultimatum battles. This, this game actually turned out to be everything you could hope for. Also, 80 card deck and all, but I don't think I've played Doom Foretold today. I don't think I've even drawn it. Scorching Dragon Fire on my goose? You monster. All right, here it is. Can the opponent draw the victory? What's left in their deck must be good. <laughs> and they scoop. So I do want to take a second to address what I think is wrong, what went wrong with their deck. These low impact cards like Dragonfire and Prophecy, if you have too many of those, your ultimatums just don't hit good cards. And if your ultimatums don't hit good cards, you can't win. So you do have to play a lot of Ugins and Terror of the Peaks and Beanstalk Giants and some versions even add Shark Typhoons and things like that. And that's the problem for the Teamer Ramp deck in Best of One. If you run cheap removal, which is kind of required to stay alive, your ultimatums can be bad. So I'm, I'm sure that in some senses, the opponent got very unlucky this game, but in others, like there is a serious cost to playing cheap removal in an ultimatum deck. My goodness, guys, some days, some days ranking up is the reward and some days the reward is content. Some days you just get through it, and if you get out with content, it's a success. And we won on a four-card hand, and we had a battle of the ultimatums, which we were able to triumph in, and I will take that. Even though I think my win rate today is supremely negative, I, I think we're going to keep one or two of the games where I just had unplayable, terrible draws, just because I have to, one, fill up the video... <laughs> And two, to give you just a taste of what I experienced, but I think there were seven games today decided by bad, like just not hitting land drops and mulliganing into oblivion. And everybody has those days. I alluded to it in yesterday's video. I have them too. I, I guarantee you it's harder than you think to swallow it, smile, go again, and try to make great content, uh, try to make entertaining content. And I think people take for granted that a lot of times in these videos, I've been recording for hours, and some days it's bashing your head against a wall. And I think that people don't see that side because that side isn't entertaining to most people. So we don't look at that side. And for everybody who says, please upload everything, I promise you, that's not actually what you want. I promise you, making an making an entertaining product, there's a reason, right, that we watch like TV shows. There's a reason that some viewers get more than others. It's cut down to the important stuff, right? You just, you don't want to see all that. I promise you. But I promise I will keep trying to find ways to make this game entertaining. And the last time we did Eerie Ultimatum, we didn't get to cast big Eerie Ultimatums. And by God, we got to do it today. That Teamer Ramp game was insane. Anyway, for the deck itself, I do think it has the power level to get you to Mythic. I think if you play it a lot, you will get there. And I think that if you master playing it in the certain matchups, that your win rate will be positive. I like the idea of Setesan Champion and Archon of Sun's Grace instead of Great Henge, which was in the Selesnya version. And I would keep trying it out. The results weren't totally conclusive for me today. It's definitely possible to draw these cards without enchantments to trigger them. But it shouldn't happen as much as it felt like it did with so many enchantments in the deck and with Eerie Ultimatum, it's just a value explosion later in the game that's really exciting and fun. Doom Foretold also, I don't think I ever drew this card today, which is weird because I had Eerie Ultimatum in at least six opening hands that I can remember. And I don't remember ever seeing Doom Foretold once. So the deck was missing a big part of the engine through a chunk of the day. I think that means it's still pretty good, but I guess some testing, because the only black cards we're running are the Ultimatum, which is awkwardly three black, and four Elspeth's Nightmare, a Blessing, and Doom Foretold. 
So if Doom Foretold's not good, a lot of things need re-examining. Anyway, I do like the deck. Yorian decks, come on guys. Yorian! If you are the type of person who doesn't like counter spells and doesn't like blue, but still likes these crazy value plays, I think this deck is for you and you should try it out. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you again in the next video. Today is the final day for the Extra Life campaign. If you want to join the cause, this is the last chance. Any little bit helps. Thank you to everybody who's contributed. You guys are amazing. Back to the more, the plugs you're used to tomorrow. You know, like 100,000 subs. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.